About a year ago, I disappeared from the world. And when I show you where I am, well, a few people are going to say, Oh, well, that totally makes sense for Jamie, of course. And uh, a lot of people are going to say, Wait, what is going on? How did this happen? Why are you doing this? And some people just won't care. For those who do, grab yourself some popcorn. We're going back a year. All this dirt fell down during the corona apocalypse of 2020 when I couldn't get cement for six months. So what am I doing here building things out in the wilderness instead of getting some real job like a responsible adult? I've been told it's stubbornness, but I think there's more to it. You see, I used to wake up way before the sun to play with Lego for hours before everyone else got up. Hubba, hubba. I'll race you to the house. Get him, kid. <laughs> You're the best papa in the universe. <laughs> Come on, kids, let's go! Ah, <laughs> oh, check it out. The pizza tree has something on it. Grab it. Oh man, pineapple. Oh, feed it to the chickens. Let's go check out the root beer water fountain. <laughs> wow, honey, you found a pepperoni pizza. That's great. Well, I also found some big muscles. Maybe after the kids go to bed, I can massage them for you. I'm not sure what that means yet, but sounds great. Oh, you two are gross. And that would be my big sister. I love building things. Uh, I was a happy little camper. Well, at least until. Are you still gonna be my daddy? Oh, I'll always be your daddy, eh? Don't you worry about that. Of course. Being a father isn't exactly an every other weekend kind of job. And your mother, being a single parent, boy, there's going to be a lot of screaming in that house. Oh, you're going to have a tough time, kid. You're kind of on your own from... Oh, I mean, yeah, everything will be totally fine, eh? Just get yourself a uh, good degree there and uh, everything will be good, eh? I did my best to be a substitute dad for my little brother, but I didn't know what I was doing. No, it's not a tennis court. Sure is fun, though. This is lightweight styrofoam concrete, made out of garbage. Oh, don't trip. Oh, no, I'm going to fall in the water. Oh, Committing to a huge project like this with an unknown source of material was kind of risky. But I figured if I could take that much garbage out of the world, oh, that would be amazing. Not really a standard building material, but then I've always been a little bit weird. So Jamie's a very bright student, okay? Yep, yep. He, he made the sign here, but we've got some problems, um, as you can see. And here's his math test. Now we got all the answers right, okay? Yep, okay. But he didn't show any of his work, okay? Yep. So we got a C minus, okay? Yep. I spent a lot of time alone thinking about my next invention. Oh, I love building things. Hold on, hold on. I'm leaving out something kind of important. Because it's embarrassing. 
My mom met this real trashy guy who hit me because I wouldn't call him dad. They bought a house together and I spent a decade standing up to that idiot and getting between him and my little brother. The whole time my mom accusing me of stealing and doing drugs, I don't even know. It was just an unmitigated disaster. Finally, this moron was hauled away in handcuffs. Yeah, let's put all that behind. All right, let's get back to the movie. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, man. When I was at my darkest point, there was this guy. All right, kids, we're going on our 65 seconds of pop today, so get your butts in gear. Full tilt boogie, let's get at it. I'm not cheating anymore. What are you talking about, Jamie? I'm not taking the shortcut. Coach thinks we can do it. Dude, you'll never make it. If I die, I die. We're giving out everything we've got, Captain. There's simply nothing left except this ball of feelings. Boy, he sure is screaming a lot. Yeah, just don't say nothing to him about it. Check out these times. If he keeps this up, that's our provincial champ in a couple years. And I did. Twice. I started winning everything. I even won a bunch of money at some science fair with this walking popsicle stick contraption. I was getting straight A's. People would stop me in the street and say, Hey, Jamie, I saw you break the record last week. Way to go, champ. And full scholarship offers from universities. I took the prettiest girl I knew to the athletic banquet where I won most valuable player in three sports and athlete of the year. And I didn't say anything stupid and I was cool and everyone said, Hi, way to go. You're the champ, Jamie. You're the best. Then this kid comes up to me and says, I wish I had your life. And all I could say was, no, you don't. Because all these awards and recognition, it was just superficial nonsense. It didn't make my life any better. If anything, it made it worse, because now I still have the same problems, but everyone else thinks my life is amazing. My last year of high school, I mostly kept to myself. I did meet my first serious girlfriend. I found that a happy Jamie outperforms an angry, frustrated Jamie by quite a bit. She came to my last race of the year and was upset that I was focused on the race, not on her. Kind of ruined the whole thing after that. No matter what else was going on in my life, I always had my inventions. Word got out that I was collecting styrofoam. I started getting it faster than I could use it. I just had to figure out what to do with all these garbage bags. How many of 
of these stack on top of each other, you need to finish the whole floor. Three of these makes the first floor. Yeah. Can I just sum up my university experience by showing the final result? All right, fine. I went to an Ivy League school, even though they didn't have athletic scholarships. It was supposed to be a really hard program and the smartest people in the world would be there and I would meet super geniuses and feel stupid and learn so much and make amazing friends and we'd do crazy things. And I got there and I found the classes to be absurdly easy. And people around me were talking about how hard it was. I couldn't figure it out at first. Was I just so lost that I didn't realize how much I was not understanding? Or had I just not met the smart kids yet? And then along came this engineering contest. And I thought, aha, this is my chance to get some unbiased feedback and see who else kills it on this engineering contest. Because I know I'm going to be in the top 1%. I won that contest by a depressingly large margin. I would come to realize that no one else was even trying to be innovative or do anything risky. They were just trying to do exactly what was expected of them. Because I was in a four-year brown noser tournament of champions. That is not what I expected. At least I was on the track team. And I was kicking butt. And then my coach and I had a disagreement regarding the number of injuries an athlete should have. And over the next three years of recovery, it was beaten into my skull. Do not ever leave my fate in someone else's hands. So I stopped attending classes and just showed up for exams and coasted through. With all my free time, I started running businesses out of my dorm room. I could install a computer network card for half what the school charged and still make a huge profit. I could not believe how much the school was charging these kids. On top of the already ridiculous tuition, they were just bleeding them dry, and this is where I learned about business ethics. The obvious question is, what's wrong with real ethics? Turns out you can make more money by being a greedy pig than you can by being ethical. And business ethics teaches a normal person how to be a sociopath. I did learn to cook. You know those demons with the rocket launcher for a hand? How you beat those guys? Uh, you gotta learn to strafe, man. How many times do I need to do this? Oh, you need to do that like 150 times to get the good tortillas. It's kind of sticky. Well, put some more flour in it. I thought you were supposed to be some kind of super genius. And why can you squat like 700 pounds, but you can't bench press like 250? Well, your mom didn't complain. Oh, <laughs> oh crap. The girls will be here in like 10 minutes. We need to hurry up. I also started making movies. I found out what we need to know. Turns out doing a terrible job of something is a great way to learn. <laughs> the university workshops were open all night. As long as you knew the security guard schedule and copied a few keys, you know, whatever. So I kept making things. My little businesses kept up with my financial needs, and I paid off my school loan six months after graduating. I swore I'd never go into debt again.
I worked a lot of different jobs for a few years, with one stipulation. Anything I did had to be worth doing, even if I wasn't being paid. When I saved up a bit of money, I had a big decision to make. I could take advantage of those connections I made at school, get a cushy job, make my parents proud, impress all the ladies, and then jump out of a 20-story window. Or I can make a break for the woods right now, head into the unknown, and maybe find something I can live with. Dude, can you think of any reason I should not buy 25 acres of land in Vermont with no road access? That sounds awesome, man! I want to come camping! Yeah, that's what your mom said. So I bought this little mountain in Vermont, packed my car, deactivated my phone, and headed for the woods. I spent the first month just camping. No responsibilities, just trying to live life and figure out what that means. And then I picked a spot and started building. I even had help from some friends. I had no idea what I was doing. But it felt better than anything else I'd done in my life. I bought every galvanized pipe within a hundred miles and made this weird contraption to punch holes in them. The nearest road was a mile away, so I had to carry everything up the mountain. No, no, I got to carry everything up the mountain. I'd put unbelievable amounts of effort into things before, but it was always to win some trophy or medal. This was the first time my efforts were going directly into something that made my life better. I was hooked. I'd never seen anything so beautiful. I could never go back. Pretty soon after I got the dome together, it snowed and water started pouring in right in the middle of the building. What had happened is one of the panels had shifted and fallen in and all that melting snow was coming right inside. So I climbed up the side of the building, which is a lot harder with all those panels on the outside. I had to climb on the inside with a couple zip ties in my teeth. Then I monkey barred my way out to the middle of the building, hanging above concrete several stories below me. And I popped that one panel up with my head and shoved the other one in with a hand and got a zip tie out and started, ah, but then this hand was losing grip. I had to climb back down to the floor before I fell to my death. I went up and down several times. Same result. And then on my way down, I realized it was getting dark. I only had 10 or 15 minutes before I'd have to leave this till tomorrow. So I thought to myself, okay, what are my options? I can leave this till tomorrow and maybe, maybe build some scaffolding or something to get up here, but I don't have extra nails. I don't even have an extra rope. I was on a very tight budget. I also don't have extra time. Like, I need to cut firewood. I need to get more food. I'm running out of money. When I really thought about it, I realized if I don't solve this right now, pretty soon I'm going to have to head back to civilization, and I am not going back. So I decided that I'm not coming down until I either fix that roof or I fall. And part of the problem was that those pipes were so cold, my hands were going numb. But that gave me an idea because I had this cut on my thumb. So I climbed out to the middle of the building again. And when I got there, I flicked my hand so blood smeared across my palm. And I grabbed that frozen pipe and it's stuck solid. So I popped that one panel up, got the other one in, got the zip tie, tied it in, got another zip tie, tied it in, and then peeled that frozen hand off the pipe, climbed back down, all the way back down to the ground. Oh, my arms were so numb. My hands were so frozen. But when I looked up at that roof and it wasn't leaking, I knew that I was going to make it. Because whatever problem comes in my path, whatever obstacle there is, I'm going to glue myself to a pipe with frozen blood if I have to. I'm going to do whatever I need to to get through.
And you better get yourself a temporary second floor. Nice. Moving to the woods was like waking up from a nightmare. I figured the more I did for myself, the less money I would need. And the less money I needed, the more freedom I'd have to live the life I want. I got my expenses under $2,000 a year, which I could make in a solid week of roofing or putting up drywall. I was developing quite a successful contracting company and thought about putting more energy into it. Then I spent three days discussing the perfect yellow to paint some vestibule and realized I'm gonna start painting vestibules red if I don't get back to the forest soon. And I've decided to build a giant robot. Damn it! Little robot. I've been going to the junkyard. It's a ball bearing. Uh, the last of my maple syrup boiling. Uh, I have one window on and a bunch of pieces at the top and now I'm gonna put this window on here I'm hoping to line the entire pond with rocks All these forest skills led to some really interesting jobs like building houses in Alaska so What do you think of your new cabin? It is <laughs> All right, here's the pump going right now. And it's pumping on that tube all the way, way, way up there. Is it pumping up there yet? There's water! <laughs> then someone offered me an airplane hanger. All I had to do was take it away. I figured digging a road up the mountain wouldn't be any harder than carrying the thing up on my back. So I spent a summer doing exactly that. I also needed to settle a debate inside my head. See, one side of me said, ah, it's impossible to dig a mile of road through the mountains. And the other side of me said, just go one step at a time and do not stop. I am a human bulldog! He's holding some nuts. Dun, 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 the workshop. Well, so here we are at the workshop. Oh, here's all my robot pieces. Well, almost all of them. Hi again. Look, there's all those robot pieces. Pretty good. Hmm. Wow, Deshana, that's a nice shirt you're wearing there. Yeah, Jimmy made it for me. Well, what is it? It's a giant robot shirt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who is this girl? That's Deshana. She came to visit, never left. After sitting on her butt for six months, I told her she needed to start helping out. Well, let's get a quick side-by-side -side contrast of our differing personalities. I'll never make it! I saw that smile. Oh no, you can make it, you can make it!
We settled on her getting a part-time job and helping with food. Yo, man, I love when you come visit the city. It's good to see you. Hey, I can't stay that long. Hey, I want to come up next weekend. Is that cool? I know I can't stay in your house since the Shana moved in. When are you getting rid of her? I'll, I'll bring my tent. Uh, anyway, I got to tell you something. Uh, I'm having another kid. Don't say nothing to my parents. I didn't tell them yet. Dude, that is so awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> you weren't planning. Nah, uh, not exactly. But you're, you're right, you're right. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. When are you having kids? You'll be an awesome dad. Funny you ask, Deshana just asked me to have kids with her, and she doesn't even want a relationship or anything. She just wants to raise no, kids No, I am, No, with her. Well, what, she's not nice to you. What about that girl, you know, the one with the, the big... Uh, 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 she just wants a career and money. She doesn't care about her family. Uh, what, what about that blonde girl, you know, the one who does all that running and exercising? She wants to know when I'm going to stop playing around in the forest and get a real house with a mortgage and... Uh, no, no, forget that, man. I mean, you got a good setup. Don't wreck that. You got no bills. That's awesome. All right, well, I'm listening. What is the chain idea? Well, I mean, she actually wants to be a mom. Like, she wants to have kids and raise them. And, you know, she's got good eyesight. And, yeah, her... She's in great shape for someone who sits on her butt all day. And she's terrible with me, but she's, she's great with kids. And, like, she won't leave. Just tell her to get out of the house, kick her out. No, no, no. I mean, like, if we have kids together, she's not going to want to take them and leave because she really likes living off-grid. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So, basically, you want this girl for your kids, but not for you. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I think you should do it. Seriously? Yeah, man, life is short. You got an opportunity to do something good now. Who knows when you get another opportunity? But you gotta make me one promise. What's that? You gotta promise me that one day when you got your kids and you got your life all straightened out, and Deshane has her house over there and you got your house here, you're gonna meet a girl who actually wants to be nice to you and take care of you as much as you take care of her. Dude, what girl? I mean, besides your mom. You don't turn her away. Right. Nah, man, you'd be surprised. You just gotta promise me this before we get out of this car. All right, fine. Yeah, let's say I have all my kids and I get my life all straightened out and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I meet a girl who actually wants to be nice to me. I, I won't turn her away. Okay? You promise, man. You can't break your promise. I know what a promise means to you. All right, let's go see my mom. She made us dinner. She wants you to build her some kind of a tamale machine. To pay with tacos and tamales. You know when you have that feeling that you forgot something, but you can't think of what it was, so you figure it must not be that important. But then it is. Come on. Oh, okay, I 
I can re-grind this. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Focus on what you're doing, Jamie! Okay. Well, the reinforcement rope was obviously still strong. That's why it was so hard to get that back up. So I got it back up and put some cement in those cracks. I think it'll be all right. At least once I get the pieces up here on. That's where it really gets the strength, when it gets all that up there. Which is why when I built this one over here, I put a post in before I put those in. And I'm pretty sure and I still have enough sun left to go home, get two squares for this, come back and put those suckers. Let's go. Oh, we're not losing a day today. No fate. I do not accept you. No days lost. With kids on the way, I renovated. I tore that dome right down to the steel pipes. Here's total side view. I got the roof on a day before it snowed. And I searched Craigslist and found a pile of used insulation and free windows, free. Oh, I couldn't believe it. This place was becoming even more amazing. I also found a lot of free paint. Mostly pink. On your marks! Get set! Beep! <laughs> oh, I can't even reach the ceiling! Now it's hot up here. That should fix it. I demand you have fun right now. Well, I thought it was pretty cool. Hmm. I don't know, it's looking pretty good in there. I figured it would be pretty easy to heat this place, but I mean, it's not even done and like I'm sweating like a pig. Apparently grocery stores throw out unbelievable amounts of styrofoam delivery boxes, which make amazing insulation. For my workshop. Hey, kid, where are you going? Oh, good thing 
Papa's on top of a robot. He'll take care of the zombies. Ah. Okay, what are these cool walking toys? Ah, long story short, I worked with a toy company and made these walking robots. It involved a bunch of trips to China and England. So it's like some sort of little uh, little animal. No, it's like a like a vehicle, like a spider tank. Oh, like this. Vanguard Strider. I don't think the kids will understand that. It's got legs, it's not a vehicle. It's more like a little pet crab, innit? Do you guys ever watch any anime or play any video games, anything like that? Uh, I haven't got time for that kind of thing. They're busy in the office making new toys for all the little boys and girls. Bottom line, when they hit stores, they started winning awards. Boys Toy of the Year in England and Australia, and then I started getting invited to these weird product development meetings with the heads of the biggest stores in the world. Uh, you're, you're just not getting it, kid. All right, what's your name? Jamie. Look, Jamie, I'm gonna explain this in terms that uh, anyone can understand. We sell garbage. Do we sell some kids something they like? They're at home playing with it for uh, weeks. Well, we sell them some piece of trash that breaks the minute they get at home or is uh, yeah, in some way just uh, totally disappointing. They're immediately asking their parents to come buy something new. And that is how we make the big bucks. Business ethics. Well, that was a bit of a strange meeting, wasn't it? I've been told this myth over and over, which goes something like this. You know, the richest people in the world are the ones who work the hardest and do the most good for society. Really? Because as far as I can tell, the richest people are the ones who took everything good out of themselves and threw it away. They live their lives with contempt and greed and treat others like slaves. And then to pretend they're virtuous, they go around saying stupid things like, well, you got to give back to society you know, one weekend every year. Oh, how magnanimous of you. How about you stop taking the entire rest of the year? Have some compassion. Use some imagination. Figure out how to do things that are mutually beneficial for you and other people. That creates real value in the world instead of just destroying it. Oh, but then you wouldn't get as much money. Short-sighted cowards. I realize that no amount of technology or inventions is going to make the world any better as long as people are willing to sell out their morality and ethics for a buck. So I came up with the Adventure Builders Club to keep myself on the right track and to make it easier to teach my kids all the stuff I should have learned growing up. An Adventure Builder follows eight basic principles. Find the truth. Tell the truth. Don't be lazy. Face, face your fears. Have love in your heart. Think for yourself. Choose your own life. And no matter how far you've come, you've still got a long way to go. No tool or machine I've ever owned is as valuable as having a set of principles. Something to answer the questions that don't really have answers. To give life meaning. To make the impossible Seem like it might actually be doable. You wanna go fast? I've been told I need more faith, but I don't know. I put myself in a position where I need to build a concrete thing that will span this entire distance. It almost defies logic, except that logic is the only reason I think it's possible. And somehow, I'm counting on myself to do this. Okay, one step at a time. Figure out how many of these pieces I'm going to need and the angles they need to be. I don't know how I'm going to get these all in place. 
I'm pretty sure I can put the first row in. So let's start there. At this point, I was exhausted. I kept saying to myself, just keep going. One step at a time, do not stop. It'll be worth it. Once I had kids, I started becoming more sensitive to events like this. Well, howdy, son. I'm your local tax assessor. Saw you on the news last week. Looks like you've been busy. We're going to have to reassess this uh, property value here. Oh, well, how'd you get up here? Oh, drove up on the service road, of course. You mean the service road I'm not allowed to use? Ah, right, now you're getting it. All right, well, here's your new property value. It's going to be a mild increase in your taxes. Dude, this is triple. Wait, let me get this straight. Anything I do up here to make my life better for me and my family, I'm going to have to pay more taxes, which will pay for the road that I'm not allowed to use, that you can use to come up and tax me more. That's the American way. No, it's not. You know, when I decided to leave, it wasn't because it had become illegal to collect rainwater or that it was illegal to be off-grid in some states. It was a fact that no one cared. People would say, oh, that law doesn't affect me personally, so ah, I'm just not going to pay attention. Quickest way to lose your freedom? 
is to ignore when your neighbor loses theirs. Freedom is not free. So I and several of my friends have decided that we're going to buy an island and start our own little community there. While my friends were busy looking for excuses to not follow through, I decided to give my family a test drive and we spent a winter in the Bahamas. Hi, Jamie. Oh, did you get lots of stuff on your adventure? <laughs> Check out what I got. I got a hat. It was probably dirty from the previous owner, but it had been washed in the sea for quite some time. I also got a buoy and a pipe and a jug with some fishing line on it and lots of rope. Check out all the rope I got. Oh yeah, I also got a barrel. It's for my boat. I'm building a boat. You put some nails in your jug too? Yeah. <laughs> Good work. Oh, awesome sauce! I wonder all my life. I got it for nothing. Yeah, that's where you found all this stuff. Oh, do you want to go for a walk? Oh, you want to hang out on the boat? Okay. When I moved to the mountain, it was my second choice. I always wanted to live on an island. And with confirmation that the rest of my family loved the ocean, I sold the dome. And I thought between that and the money I saved from those robots, I think I have just enough money to start a new life somewhere else. It'll take a bit of luck and a lot of hard work. So Deshaina, I'm going to be carrying two kids around and all their stuff. I need you to carry your own weight. Okay. Are you just saying that or are you going to ask me to carry your bags for you? Okay. Uh. I just had one loose end to wrap up before we left. Gonna go swimming in, in Chile? Yeah. Okay, we gotta go. Alright, I'm getting on, I'm getting on. So here we are at the bus station in Santiago. Okay, the sign says that this dude is like 200 years old and he's got 150 years to go, roughly. It's crazy, man. Okay, let's go. I can't take one, or I don't have any hands. Can you put one in my mouth? Just... <laughs> Mega Johnson. Please, don't get up. I got, I got it. It's fine. Yeah, maybe we'll just live here for the rest of... Uh... Okay, we're only here for a week. But it'll be good. There's a pool right over there. A swimming pool. Oh, and this totally awesome tent here. I found it in the junkyard like 10 years ago. Long-lasting metal zippers. Ha-ha! Check out my spoon! Cool, eh? No, wait, you can't have that. I already made you a shovel. A one-legged dinosaur, a duck, a baby, a chain with a... I can't believe you just took my spoon. I want my spoon. I'm gonna eat your head. Oh, good morning, sunshine. Very nice hairdo. Oh, the mountains are awesome. So the first island guy I talked to wanted 2.4 million dollars for his island, which is never enough. And then there was this other island I could look at, but I had to wait like two weeks to go see it. I don't know, in a nutshell, I just wasn't feeling it, you know?
I guess this big tree fell down between the last time I was here and today, so that was kind of convenient. And uh, that's my first board. It's not bad. Oh, there we go. Now I have a bunch of two by sticks. Starting to get some more now. Excuse me, sir, there seems to be a leak in your roof. No, no, where? Oh, I think I see it. Oh, man. Oh, there's food ready? Yes. I should go get some food? Yes. All right. Did you make it? No. Sometimes to find your way, you have to get real lost first, which is scary when you have a family to take care of 
a very limited budget and no home. We made our way to the Caribbean. I got this sudden feeling that we were close to where we needed to be. So we rented a house on an island, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. We didn't have a boat yet, so I decided to make one. It would be a lot cheaper than buying one, and being able to build a boat is a guaranteed job when you live by the sea. Make sure those lines are straight there, Chief. That's about it for that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh man, I'm getting excited. Yeah, that's about right. Sure. <laughs> Where'd you find that weird dude? Probably okay. That's my brother. I have a brother. He's cool. <laughs> Let's go be nerds. Okay, we're gonna do some steering. Yeah. So I cut me mast to the right length, I think. It's gonna go along this edge of the sail here. Alright, I got that sucker up there. Again, and those parts should be done. I don't think you're gonna hit the dock. Pretty sweet, eh? It's even cloudy. Electric boat is totally viable. Yeah, done. Well, you have two babies on the boat now. I know, come on, let's go. Alright, so lots of sun today. I got my solar panels slid into their grooves and... Whoa, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but that's significantly faster. Never mind. Smoke started coming out of here. Don't the girls are taking off on a boat adventure. And I'm just working my way up this seam, connecting it all the way. Oh, my four-year-old told me I needed to work on my little boat today. So I slapped some fiberglass into this here mold. Oh, that's a nice smooth mold. Oh, hey, he's got the lid on and everything. But now we don't have to me. And out here we got the speed dryer. Oh yeah. Hey you guys, what do you think? Do you like the boat?
Jamie, what you doing? I hope we're taking our boat home. Dude, we are in. And I'm just going to shut up and show you. Here's my third floor with all the solar panels. Here's our bay. We're the only one here on this little lagoon. There's like lots of wide open ocean just on the other side of this little bay. And there's my island over there. My house looks nice? Yeah. Oh, thanks.
Okay, I'm seriously so excited. I'm like gonna put like a five story tower, like right where the camera is or back there just a little bit. It's gonna be a water slide that starts way, way up there. And the canal will have a beach big enough to like do cannonballs and dives. And there's gonna be like food growing everywhere. Just mango and an avocado and a banana and food that's grown on a thing that I don't have to buy at some store where it has pesticides on it. Oh, I'm so excited. This is one tenth of a dome. Oh, how awesome is this? Oh, nice muscles. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, and look, my boat ties up and everything. Banana! Where did you get it? I grew it. It's the one we grew. Isn't that awesome? Oh, but was it as spectacular as this spectacular piece of nautical engineering? Are you the chicken whisperer? Yep. When I made my latest boat, one of the primary purposes was to be able to go get materials, building materials. And this was my first test. But it is basically done. I don't care about the paint job. Just as huge. Ah, oh, totally delicious! And here's my basic first drawing of what I'm thinking about. Yeah, so this island has way more land than my first one. Get some practice in the skinny kayak. Huh, that's where they've been hiding those things. Oh, I can see it from the windows anyway. I just painted my second kayak. Oh, and of course I have a J now because I had to clean my roller off somewhere. And I'm continuing with concrete up here. Since there are two sides to every story, I'm gonna get some help explaining what happened next. So what happened when I was building your house? I don't know. It was pretty stressful for both of us, I think. Yes, it was very stressful. <laughs> Uh, that, that pretty much covers it. Let's just leave it at that. I don't want to be mean to. I really don't. <laughs> a few weeks ago, when you came over to my house, and as you were walking out the door, you screamed, F you, mm -hmm. except you used the whole word. Yeah. I effing hate this effing place, mm -hmm. and then stomped away. Yeah. Was that being nice to me? It, it wasn't about you. When I was working on your house, I was so physically exhausted, I didn't have like the energy or the presence of mind to say to myself, oh, she's just upset about something else, not at me. So it really started affecting me, like every everything you said that was not nice. Like when I was pregnant and hormonal and totally like kind of out of my mind in general. Yeah, that, that was not good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, being a woman really sucks sometimes. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does. Let me tell you, I envy you guys. Oh, well, good. With you your should. nice, even, like, hormone levels that never change. Everything's easy for me. Yeah. The progress. Hey, careful! <laughs> that... You mean the progress in being able to, to tolerate each other's presence? Yeah, yeah. That was so horrible about me. That's what there's, I understand. That's the thing. It's, it's not, there's nothing horrible about you, Jamie. But oh. like, I feel like you think that I think that. So I'm not making up anything about what you've done. I'm just saying it in a way that makes it sound worse than it was. Yes. I think so. So that's probably because from my perspective, it was a lot worse. I'm sorry. 
Uh, I really am. I'm sorry, Jamie, for taking advantage of you and being rude and obnoxious and bitchy at you. I think things are a lot better now that we have, we each have our own space. Because yeah. like you can do whatever the blurp you want here, and I can do whatever the blurp I want over there. And I think things are much better now. Yeah. What's not wrong with us, fine? We have awesome kids. We do have awesome kids. That worked out great. That was the deal, though. That was yeah, that, that was, was the point of us sticking together. Yeah. Yeah. Good work. Good work. <laughs> All right. <Thank> you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow, there's a lot of spackling to do out here. I'm gonna need more sand. I got my gutters done up there. So now I've got water coming down here, across there, uh, through that pipe and into my concrete water tank. Yeah, I'd like to see someone steal that thing. <laughs> oh, and what am I gonna do up here on the hill? Oh, I don't know yet. Exciting stuff though. Oh, and a climbing wall back here. I gotta put like little holds. Oh, the kids are gonna love that. Maintaining Deshana's house proved to be impossible. It reminded me of my old contracting days. We disagreed on everything. After years of working against each other, I realized we'd never become self-sufficient. She thought that was just me being negative. I became so demoralized and frustrated that I started getting sick. More sick than I care to admit. Oh, uh, hello and welcome to the offices of... Oh, is, you, is that you, Jamie? Oh, uh, what's happening, man? How's it going? Good to hear from you. Look, I'm at work right now. I can't really... Hold on, hold on. Um, excuse me, could you uh, close the door, please? This is an important call I really need to take. Man, you sound terrible. What's going on? No, I've been watching your videos on the internet. And uh, I know you've been doing a lot of hard work and all that, but I don't think that's a problem. Because I've seen you do hard work before, and the, the harder it gets, like the more, the more revved up you get. Like you're some kind of nutcase and likes these challenges. But right now, you sound like you're, you're losing your will to live. And I'm wondering, where, where is that guy who wakes up at 4.30 a.m. and starts shouting at the sun to hurry up and get in the sky? What's going on? 
No, I think I think you got another problem because I've been reading between the lines a little bit because I you know I know the background information. I think the problem is that for a lot of years you've been hoping that maybe you and Deshana will grow closer together, but now you're at the point in your life where you know it's not going to happen and you need to let go. You need to make a final decision on that. Yeah, I've been going to counseling a little bit. It's good stuff, right? So you need to let go of uh, whatever guilt you have that you're like not taking care of her enough or you know you're not letting anyone down because you you start doing what you need to do to get back to the, the person you need to be because right now you're not the guy you're not the guy you want to be for your kids right this is not the dad you want to be you want to be that guy who uh, builds a builds a trampoline in the third floor and and puts in a slide and does all kinds of crazy cool stuff and is like happy and super positive and all that stuff because right now you sound like you sound like you're you're just giving up, man. Yeah, man, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, man. Next time you call, I wanna hear I wanna hear the other guy. All right, I gotta go back to work. Good luck, man. Thanks, dude. He's all right. I can't give up. Not when I'm this close. I just need a year. I can't do another year unless it's different. I'm gonna have to block out everyone and everything except my kids. Focus on it a hundred percent. Top priority. Come on, Jamie. Do what you do now. Get up. <sighs> Uh, inspiration. Need some inspiration. More inspiration. Oh, it's gonna take months just to get a path in. Wait. Okay. If I divide this project into a thousand pieces, can I do at least one per day? Yeah, I think so. Is any one of those thousand pieces going to be impossible? Uh, no. All right, then what's the problem? Let's go. I need to put my mind in a state that is not conducive to other people in order to make some incredible thing happen. So that's where I am right now. So a lot of you guys didn't don't even need that explanation. You're just like, oh yeah, totally get it. All right, I've got this project and it is 100% my main focus, top priority right now. I gotta go do it. All right, and I promise to get some video that I'm just not going to be able to show for a while. Oh my gosh, son, come up. I got stuff to do. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> oh, I love this. Excuse me, Mr. Street Sweeper Man.
Yep. Whoa, you're caught in the act. Poopy, poopy condensed <laughs> sky bears. Is that what we've got now? You're a poopy condensed sky bear. going through all that again. Oh, happy ending. I was told over and over that all of this would never happen, that I could not do it. Here's the thing about uh, people who are overly concerned with what's impossible. They're never the ones who are making things possible. And I guess that's a decision everyone has to make for themselves. You know, do I want to spend my life telling everyone else what they can't do? Or do I muster my own courage and start something that I know I can't finish? And then go on the journey, the adventure of finding the strength and the determination and the skills to follow through anyway and turn that impossible thing into something possible. You know, here I'm, I'm past all the impossible parts. I still have a lot to do, but nothing too hard means I'm gonna have to come up with something new. Ah, uh, in a few months. Right now I'm just gonna enjoy the fact that I've kinda got my life straightened out. Then I get my life all straightened out and, you know, blah blah blah. I meet a girl who actually wants to be nice to me. I, I won't turn her away. You promise, man? You can't break your promise! How's that? Good ending? How do you get mustard in college if you ran out of mustard? What? I'm out of mustard? Yeah. Well, let me squeeze you. Maybe I can get some out of you. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I get mustard out of your no. sister by no. squeeze her? I'm not a mustard seed. You're not a mustard seed? No. How do you know where, where mustard comes from, but you don't know what mustering your courage is? Do you know what mustering your courage is? You don't, you don't put mustard on it. You muster it like you gather your courage, uh. like you collect your courage. But you could, I mean, mustard might help if you put some mustard on yourself. You know, your mustard tastes good. Probably give you more courage. Okay, so this is supposed to be the credits. Uh, I guess I'll, oh, wait, hold on. Okay, this is supposed to be the credits. So, uh, well, Jamie was me and I'm Jamie, so that was super easy to do. Deshana was Deshana and then my kids were my kids, and then I think kind of obviously all those other characters were just me with yarn on my head or a crayon mustache, being silly. Uh, I think that's everyone. Oh, and for anyone who's uh, really upset that I shouldn't be doing any of this stuff and you need to call someone and whatever, don't worry. It's all made up. Total fiction. So just go back to your cubicle and have a latte or whatever you do. Everyone else, keep being awesome.
Oh, uh, oh, okay, here's what you do next. When I say go, uh, turn off your computer with that little button there, and then stand up and turn around, and then go do the stuff you need to do to be the person you need to be. Okay, ready?